Hello and thank you for joining me for another day in the lab. Today I have a Sun Microsystem Sunfire V480 that we are going to be disassembling for parts. This uh, system is actually here on consignment. Um, both the other guy and I are completely out of room and this isn't one of the servers that we particularly wanted to keep for the collection I guess you could say and the parts are becoming rare so instead of throwing this out we're going to keep every single piece and sell it online uh, doesn't matter if it takes two weeks two years eventually somebody is going to need the stuff out of this and I want to make sure that it's available to them now the Sun V480 is a smaller cousin to the V880 I have downstairs I'll post a tour link to that in the description of the full tour and it actually takes the same processor boards as the 880 does downstairs it uses the same type of fiber channel hard drives as the 880 does and that's pretty much it there will be some other minor similarities and I will definitely point them out as we go along so let's get into it so I guess I'll give you a quick overview of what's in here before we take it down we got two power supply holes I already have the power supplies out because I put those up on eBay last night so there's actually a bezel that goes here, it says Sun Microsystems, and then you have your power supplies, and you have a center fan here. This is your key switch, it should be to turn on and off. Looks like it is, I know that's this one up here, this is just to lock this door it looks like. And this is metal construction on the outside, plastic on the front. This thing probably weighs 60 to 80 pounds, definitely, definitely lighter than the 300 pound V880 downstairs. So we'll go ahead and pop out one the hard disk drive. Now this system does work just fine. It's fully tested, but nobody wants it. I mean, these things sell on eBay as the whole unit for 99 cents. So obviously it's not worth that as a complete unit. So this is our fiber channel drive. Now this uses fiber channel SCSI, which is kind of a, a serial standard, similar to like serial ATA. It uses this really small drive connector you'll recognize that connector style on the 80 pin SCA drives except that the 80 pin SCA connector is the width of the drive almost here it is clearly different you can see our obligatory Sun air baffle and then our Fujitsu stuff on the top so this is actually Gus's drive I'll save this for you and that's pretty much it right here we have our key switch so you have off on lock which basically locks out the equivalent of control alt delete which would be stop s and then diagnostic so this is extended diagnostic mode on boot and then obviously obviously the the main lock to lock this you can't get it open and then we have our laptop style dvd rom which goes through to the front Sun was pretty creative with their designs. I actually like Sun. They're one of my favorite companies just because they allowed their engineers to run a little wild with their ideas and they ended up making it into a lot of systems. So this is a hot swap card cage and I've never opened it before so I have no idea. Okay. So it looks like it comes out like that. Oh, that's nice. So this whole thing actually plugs into the back plane and these handles down here will pop it out. But we're going to be going in through a different way, so let's do that now. starting to get into interesting stuff. Alright, so here you can see that the only card in the system is the Sun RSC card. RSC is a remote management card or like lights out management on the HP servers. It's actually a full computer in its own right and it has its own battery backup so it works in the event of a power outage. 
has a 56k PCM CIA modem, you know, the PC card modems. I wonder if it's card bus. No, it is not. It is a 16 bit PCM CIA card. Looks like it does not have the X jack. It looks like it wants to pop out, but that's. This plugs in right there anyway. So that gives us a little phone cord. So this is a whole computer. It allows you to remotely power on and power off this sun system. It allows you to view power supply conditions and system temperatures. And you can even redirect the system console to a serial port on this card and load a new operating system or whatever. Full system admin. We're going to go ahead and pop this board and see just how much we get with it. Oh. Looks like the fan tray has to come out first. That's easy enough. And we have one plug here to unplug. This does maintenance lights and such. All right, now I think we are. Oh, we got one more connector here. It goes into the disc back plane. Boy, that one's a... Uh, it's out, but I gotta get it clear of the board. Okay. So now we can lift these, pull out one more connector. This thing's just got a bunch of them on it. Boy, if you wanted to hot swap PCI card, you'd still have to pull this out of the rack. Okay. Bam. So here's our Sun RSC card slot. The rest of these are 64-bit PCI. And it says looks like there's two 66 megahertz slots. So yep, zero and one. And then these four are 33 megahertz, 64 bit PCI. Over here we have our voltage regulator modules. Now these actually step down 48 volts into usable voltages for all of the logic that's on the board. So you can see right there it says 36 to 75 volts, 6 amps. Puts out 12 volts at 10 amps. Anyway, I think that's what it says. I'm reading it backwards. And then we have 5 volts at 25 amps and 3.3 volts at 36 amps. So these little modules might be worth selling separately since it looks like they're replaceable and can potentially go out. Now looking down in here you can see this metal can is actually where the main AC line plugs in and then this this is the power supply backplane so this splits the main AC between the two power supplies. And you can see the back of our disc backplane on this side here. And that's pretty much it, so let's go ahead and open up the other side. So you got five screws on top. side edge and then the panel lifts up and up. Now the V880 is capable of taking four of these processor boards. 
the V480 is only capable of taking two of these processor boards. Each processor board has a minimum of two CPUs on it, well, a minimum or maximum of two CPUs. You can never get this in a single CPU board. Then it has 16 memory slots underneath this cover. So as you can see, this is a fully stacked memory board. These, are, these will either be, I want to say, 256, 512, or 1024 meg. I think they may have even had 128 meg sticks in these. So you could get this in like a 4 gig RAM configuration or 8 gig RAM configuration. And I think 8 was the, was the max. No, maybe 16 was the max. 16. Yeah, 16 gig was the max that you could put in here. Um, so in this you could have a maximum of 32 gigs of RAM or in the V880 you could have a maximum of 64 gig of RAM. This system was released in the early to mid 2000s, like I would say 2002, 2003. Let's see if we have a build date on here. Yeah, looks like about 2003 with what I've seen so far. So, let's stand the system up. Okay, so to get the CPU board out, we got thumb screws on each end. Then you lift these tabs. Make sure you lift them as evenly as possible. Sometimes you can rock the board by lifting one tab a little bit further than the other and that helps get you out. So now we're loose. So now we grab, lift, slide straight out, and here we are. So here's the bus connector. You can see immediately we have a voltage regulator module. These are the heat sinks for the UltraSpark 3s. Immediately underneath the end of the heat sinks here underneath that pad is the external cache. There's 8 megs of external cache per processor. This is the air intake side, so you can see the end of all the beautiful RAM sticks. And so this is the self-contained processor module. It connects to the bus via fire plane interface, which I think is a 10 or 11 gig bandwidth interface. So let's set this out of the way. Okay, so looking down in here, you can see the center plane. This is where the processor board was plugged into. You can see we have a blank here. And this blank is actually a dust protector. So when this processor slot is not in use, it keeps the dust out of the contacts so you'll be ensured you'll have good connection when you do upgrade. Uh, looks like there's another can here for AC input. I guess I didn't look at the back too terribly much to see what all was there, but there's two main AC inputs, so one for each power supply. And then we have our, our card slots. And then right here you have, I'm not sure what this one is, but you got serial, and you got ethernet, and then you have two USB. So you actually, if you had a graphics card in here, you could use USB keyboard and mouse and boot this thing up to a graphics console and actually load the system or use it that way. Okay, so I've taken these screws out along the top here and on the side back here. Now we're going to pull the center plane. Also, I had to disconnect this cable on the, the front end. And lift it out. You can see on the back side, there isn't much for components, but we do have the connector for the PCI bus. On the front side, we have quite a bit here. Once again, we have voltage regulator modules, a couple of heat sinks. There's our blank processor slot. And then here's where our active slot was. Now, there's a few chips on here. Most of this here handles the fire plane interface. We have a QLogic SCSI controller down here. We have some Sun specific branded chips here, 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 and here. And then we have Broadcom dual Ethernet controllers here. 
and a couple more heat sinks. Once again, our, our regulators. And that pretty much covers the center plane, so this good center plane should fetch about $40 to someone who needs it. Okay, so here's our power distribution board. We have one IEC socket here. We have one IEC socket here. And that's pretty much all that's on here, except for a few caps. There's a few ICs down here, um, one of which actually talks over an I-squared C bus to identify what board this is, what version, etc. There might be some power monitoring things on here as well. We have a couple of regulators here. And that's pretty much it. These are the main power supply connectors. Of course, there's two of them. And then this is the connector here that goes into the center plane to be distributed to the voltage regulators and then the rest of the system. Here is the disk back plane removed. So we have our interface cable here. And then we have power in here. And these are actually fiber channel ports. So if you had multiple controller cards, like you had a couple extra controller cards in your PCI slots, you can actually tie them into here and use disk, disk multipathing. So basically more than one controller works with the hard disk drives and you can actually double your, your disk throughput that way. Here's the front, once again with the obligatory fiber channel SCSI disk drive connectors that you see on the hot swap fiber channel drives. And that's pretty much it. There's not much else on here. Here is our laptop DVD ROM that was branded by Sun. And it has the standard IDE port on the back, parallel, parallel ATA, which goes into this adapter board. Now the other end of this cable was 50 pin, so it threw me off a little bit but the other pins actually just go to this, and this didn't really go to anywhere, but this is still IDE. So this system does have an IDE bus just for the CD drive. Here's our V480 fan assembly. Metal housings, plastic blades, 220 millimeter fans. They are 48 volt fans. That's pretty interesting. And then we have a 12 volt fan down here. 48 volts at a quarter of an amp. Must be pretty hoss. Here's the front. So I'll just go ahead and save this and put it online as one unit. And here's the faceplate, all removed. It's just these two screws down here on the bottom. And then it lifts up and out. So that is it. We are a completely empty chassis devoid of all electronics and wiring. We'll put this on the metal scrap pile and maybe it'll become another air box like the old chassis did. From the other machine. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, hit the comment box or hit my website, doogielabs.com. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, take it easy.